confusion should be. Yeah. The go to coming out from Todak has to be head in to the draft. By the way, just to like, like to remind everyone that the top seed during the first round of the knockout stages, the top seed team, for example, Echo as the top one from their groups, will be the one to decide which side they will play on for the first game. So Echo chose to be first pick. That is absolutely correct, and uh, that means that they will be banning out Ling. What? Yeah. What? 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 What's up with the Ling? What's up with the Ling? Rival is pretty good with the Ling. And uh, mm -hmm. the thing about, about Toda is they always have plan B, plan C, plan D, 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 D in the game. <laughs> Whereas like first D didn't happen, then the second D might, might, might go down. So yep. with, with Rival on an Assassin pick, they could yep. either pressure or go for, for a split push. So a double split push kind of composition yep. where usually when it comes to the team fight, Moon and Yume is definitely Moon needed. Uh, most of the time, Momo is there as well, especially if he's using something like a Joy that can go straight to the back line and burst someone out very fast. Yep. So uh, the, the Ling Ban is very, very much just respecting Rival. Okay. There yeah. will come a point in this draft, by the way, that a Dr. Man, everyone knows watching Echo, they draft really quickly. Yeah. Right? It's called a Blitz draft, where you just pick up the hero, whatever they think so. But so far, you see the 1-1 and the Kaja band out, the, the Joy eventually will be open up, as well as the Fredrin. Which any kind of, in, any, anything you want to see as the first pick for Echo? Uh... As a Malaysian fan, I don't know, maybe like a Uranus or something? Uranus, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, just, just, don't, don't, don't pick, just, just don't pick anything great. Don't pick yeah. the Fredrin. Yeah, I have a okay. feeling it's going to be the Fredrin. Don't though. pick the Valentina. Mm. You know, just, just yeah, Uranus. Uranus. Why not? Okay. Just. <laughs> okay. But that's very likely maybe not a two years ago, right, sure. perhaps. During MPL Season 6, perhaps that will be a first pick. But today, it's all about the Fredrin, the Joy, maybe the Valentina. If you're from Todak, Repo and uh, the Fell, who, what do you think is the best hero as the first two picks for Todak? Time to drop the for me, beat if like Novaria is open, Novaria, oh, yeah. okay. Okay. Maybe Novaria can, is he, open. Yeah, because uh, uh, it but is but my mission. Oh, they to the Lancelot. Yeah, Echo for the Lancelot. So okay. maybe from here, maybe uh, for me, maybe they can pick Novaria and uh, for example. Cho? Cho maybe, yeah, respect for Yaoi yeah. because they don't, I, didn't yeah. want Yaoi to pick their hero. How about Valentina? Or you don't pick Novaria and Valentina? Here's the thing, Novaria can be used as a roamer. Unsure whether Toda wants to oh. go that route because I kind of feel like Toda really likes very uh, heavy front lines here. Yeah. So the only thing that I don't want to see is a uh, early pick for Rival unless it's a very specific uh, assassin they want to pick up because I kind of feel like uh, against Blacklist they, they pick very, very early like the Akai and everything like that and then eventually just get countered. Maybe the Fredrin in fact. Fredrin. If, 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 if he wants early pick, maybe Fredrin. Fredrin Fallen. Yeah, Fredrin, Fredrin Fallen. Okay, that's that's our guess. Oh. It indeed will be Cho. Cho. Wow. Cho. I call both of them. I call both of them. Wow. Call both. Okay. <laughs> oh. What does that mean? Uh, it means I'm clever. Okay, yeah. you are clever. Okay, and as well as Repo, now Echo. They have been denied of the Cho. Does this mean that they will be shifting a little differently here? Maybe all the more reason they should pick up the Valentina. Valentina. So that Sanji now has the kick. Okay. And for additional Are damage. You Oh no! Oh, no. Karita. Wow, double combo pit three fight. That's it. Oh. So they will beat the CC. They will beat the CC. Okay, so that's a very quick response coming out from Echo. We do know that the Kadita is a strong robot. Okay. The, the crowd is running up. I wonder why. Maybe because of the no, because, Yuzhong. No, because the Karita was dancing on screen. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it looked pretty good, actually. It looked pretty good. Yeah, so we are inviting everyone to actually come here in Cambodia for. Yeah, it. come to Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh, yeah. Like yeah. if you're from the, the Philippines, so nice. yeah. Indonesia, Malaysia, just come to Phnom Penh. Yeah, Book of Life, because it's so interesting here. There's a few seats left, literally just a few. Exactly. How do you respond now if you're Todak? Are you scared at all of the Kadita or the Yuzhong? Mm, for Marsman, maybe a little yeah. bit scary because mm -hmm. those both sure. heroes can go into back line oh, very, yeah. very difficult. Yeah. yeah, difficult. Like straight forward to the back line. So yeah. it's a little bit hard for Chico to. Uh, I think Claude will be banned here. Yeah. Claude is good against this. Yeah. Okay. No, no room for Nova. No room for, for Nova. For Echo? Yeah. Yaoi's not going to pick up the Kadita? Could, that could be. But I haven't seen him play the Kadita in a while. I've seen it on rank. Oh, yeah. well. We just streamed wow. it two wow. days well. ago. So you're watching Yaoi's stream? No, I, huh? I watch everyone's stream. Sure. Really? I need to gather information. Oh. Really, Benny Cutie has the highest GPM. That's yeah, 819. Yeah. That's uh, pretty high for a. Uh, for a marksman for sure at 800 in this uh, very important matchup we have. It's gonna be the Kufra band 
Um, do you like the Valentina here from Todak? Do you think it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a good pick going up against what Yuzhar as well as the Kadida? Um, very good for me because like he can take uh, those both hero ultimate, yep. so can for the first turtle they can like uh, balance the early game damage. Okay. Yeah. There's the claw that you guys have expected to be banned out, and it was indeed banned out by Echo. Um, of course, Chico guys is very comfortable with that kind of hero. We saw that, uh, but now Toda gonna be focusing on some of the uh, Rome bands here. Are they assuming that this uh, Kadida will be played by Sanji? Yeah. I, I think, think he did pick it up, right? Yeah, we're, yeah. we're on the. All right. Yeah, he. Yeah, we did stream with a Kadita Rome, but seven times out of ten, it's okay. likely Sanji. Okay. Honestly, I kind of feel like with the with the Rome bands as well, they're kind of forcing. Um, this Karita to be, to be in the mid. Yep. The glue has been picked up, and apparently, over to Moon Moon holds the record for the most damage dealt in a game wow. against Team Occupy. 176,000 damage. So that's pretty good. Bad. That's pretty good. Is Todak actually thinking about the carry? Well, oh, okay. Well, he, they picked up the. I think the way they pick up the carry is because they banned the Harriet. Yes. And in comes the Blitz Trap. They just gonna pick it up. No time to react. It's the Franco and the Beatrix. Todak. You are lacking um, XP lane, perhaps, or a jungler. What do you think is the last pick? For well, me, maybe jungler, because uh, right, uh, the veteran can flex to EXP because uh, okay. if the, they meet the Franco, it's really hard for jungler. Oh, okay. So, what, what kind of heroes do you think will be there? Maybe for the assassin can be split, for example, <laughs> like... What's your command? Uh, yeah. Ooh. Fanny! Oh. Yeah, oh. perfect! Fanny, yeah! Pandai Ripo! Oh. Yeah, I, uh, thank you, thank you! <laughs> okay, so we have a few seconds here, um, Ripo. I want to pick your brand. I want to ask you, what do you think is the, the general win condition here for both teams? Who do you think is the more favored? For me, I uh, I didn't pick any side. Like, I'm Malaysian, but I really like Echo Draft, seriously. Okay. The yeah. Draft is really like... Pick off and then team fight. Pick mm. off, team fight. Wow. Yeah. Well, so you just like to play in that kind of. Uh, yeah, I right. really like that game gameplay. So okay. Toda need to be careful. Oh. Okay, how about you, gentlemen and lady? <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, it's making it a bit more. Nah, it's okay. It's like complicated for you. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's okay. I'll get you just used to it. We have a full five game series to do it. But yeah, she's sorry for being a lady. And for yeah. me, looking at this game, <laughs> I'm 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 looking at Toda. If they want to win, I agree with with uh, Ripo. They gotta play macro. And a play macro that will be the win condition for Todak while Echo very comfortable with this. Now it turn up. Please take us to the land of dawn. Ladies and gentlemen, let's invite you through the portal as the swordfishes and the orcas are going to collide for game number one in this best of five series. The crowd reacted, yeah, we missed the hook on a non-moving buff. But you know, it's okay, it's okay. It's all right, because again, in this kind of game, it's all about how you finish, not about how you start. Speaking about how you start, so far, Yums and Moon, they're moving together. Moon there, she doesn't know that Yaoi is there just yet. Pulls the buff. Finally That's gets it. Doesn't really matter that much. Though, oh, right? they're gonna sandwich the Playmaker. Backing up Yums, very low, Yaoi, where you going? He survives. Yeah, you just mentioned it, right? It's yeah. not how you start, it's how you finish. And he does land that hook, and it does buy Echo a little bit of time here in the early stage of the game. But one of my questions is, is, is this a signature Yaoi at the Franco? Honestly, I kind of feel like Yaoi is one of those players that you could just do with anything, right? I wouldn't say it's signature, but he's very good at it. When you say signature, you're still looking at the Cho, maybe even the Kufra. But oh wait, Sanji's gonna be okay. There's the knock up, concussive blast trigger, Ooh. a few basic attacks could have done it. Sanji lives. Yeah, he still gets out for the moment here. And you can see the rotations happening, like the difference in rotations happening from both of these teams. Feels like Todak gonna spend a little bit more time and looking to invade, actually. Carl DZ and Rival going at it. Yep, I think he got the call from Moon. They're looking for the play here, the invade. Oh, it's gonna move over to the gold buff. Right now, honestly, looking at the bottom side because I'm very curious how Chiku guys is playing this lane because as a carry with the Purify, you kind of can't take those very aggressive trades because if you have a very, very bad positioning, you don't have a lot of options to run away. So for now, Ben Beauty is actually forcing Chiku guys to be in his uh, turret. As I say that, Chiku guys is moving forward. Here's the pull coming in from Echo. 2v3, Sanji refused to leave. Still not hitting level four. There's the Black Dragon form coming in, drawing a line between the members of Todak and Echo. Carl Dizzy scores a turtle. Yeah, in this early game, you would expect 
That Todak might be a little bit more aggressive, but it doesn't seem like Rival want to go for the objective play. Oh. I mean, looking at his emblem itself, right, he wants to go for these plays on those side lanes, give uh, perhaps Chico a little bit of a fighting chance, realizing because he's on the carry, he is in a losing lane against the Beatrix. Yeah, I kind of feel like Rival, I think he goes in just a little bit just to see how much he's dealing damage in this game and I kind of feel like okay I don't feel like I'm enough just yet so he's, kind of, he's gonna wait just a little bit more I saw a little bit of attack speed a little bit of damage there on his starting build not sure what his first build is gonna be but for now I kind of feel like Toda they do want to go a little bit aggressive they want to make sure that they win the side lanes but it does look like it's not gonna be enough and for now two fingers that means it's gonna be quick not the yeah. quickest but still relatively quick it's a relatively uh, easy to fix situation here as you can see Sanford waiting very very patiently for our one of our marshals to fix up the situation something to note as well uh, Todak wants to engage right we talked about how uh, the early aggression is not misplaced but you gotta watch out for the fact that Echo is the proprietor of the Echo Express if anyone goes fast it's Echo and if, if I'm not mistaken they hold the current record for fastest game in MSC so far some teams come close I think 11.05 or 11? 11 11.03, Evo versus Fimp. Oh, it was Fimp got mad. Yeah. So we've beaten the record. All right, so, well, Fimp's not here anymore, so Echo then. <laughs> yeah, See? true, true. So they are currently the whole record <laughs> holders. So yeah, I, I think Todak has the temper, their expectations, and they have to step on the clutch every now and then, especially since Echo's looking to snowball with that early turtle. Honestly, one point as well that is very interesting. We have to see in game number one how things are going to go down because I kind of feel like for the Malaysians watching, they're like, yo, they're trusting Rival again because now he's on that assassin, which is, I got to say, pretty risky because we see how Philippine teams know how to go up against assassin junglers. Just make sure you control their buffs and then eventually they'll get they'll get capped. Yeah. They will reach their ceiling very, very soon. So this is big trust coming in for Rival. Yeah, this that's that's a question that I wanted to ask, right? Because we saw the game from Blacklist yesterday, right? When his opponent picked up an assassin in the jungle and they were able to freeze that blue buff and make the Fanny just really unable to do anything. It was a walking Fanny, but this is the circle of life. Did you know that the orcas actually naturally prey on oh. swordfishes in the sea? For this match, they will retain the same natural order, or will the food chain be reversed this the more time? You know. So nature or, you know, breaking nature this is perfect. for Todak. This is perfect. It all leads into uh, what we were discussing prior, right? Again, making sure that the purple buff doesn't come through, making sure that Rival, this trust put in him, comes through. Hey, talking about Assassin Junglers, this is THE Assassin Jungler. This is Carl TZ, right? Yeah. Utility Jungle, wise, sure, whatever. But in the early days of MLBB Esports, it's Carl TZ. I mean, that's why the Lancelot, he has a Lancelot skin. He is the Lancelot skin! He is skin. the Lancelot! He's a pretty good looking Lancelot. Okay, and with that in mind, let's see, oh, what? There's a bite down on Ayums! Again, we mentioned the GOAT! He draws first blood! I mean, that just happened, Chiku guys, losing the lane. <laughs> you were talking about how Echo would be the one moving forward, and exactly. uh, that just happened. Satu vs satu! Yeah. yeah, they heard you. I mean, for some reason, I don't... I did not... I cannot say that I did not expect that to happen I mean, from yeah, Chiku. Hey, yeah. he, he's always know. so aggressive. They don't know that, that Echo wanted to go just as fast, given their pick off engagement. As Ripo said, right? This is the place that he likes. Well, I mean, you know, Toa has the second option of splitting the map. Usually we see carry with something like a Kaja or a Franco to make sure that you get that, that the confirmed one, uh, 2v1 kills. But I don't know. I'm very interested to see how Toa is going to move around the map. Because, again, something about Toa, uh, I would say one of the early monikers for them is that they're the king of comebacks. Because they always seem to lose the early game, come mid and late. Somehow they just turn things around. I'm actually quite interested in this in-game equipment by the Beatrix, right? So Fury Hammer for the damage and she has the pants, but she's in a winning lane. Is it because she's, you know, vying that rival may come to that lane? Yeah, legit. Because again, anything could turn around very, very quickly, especially now looking at this. Four people from Toda are coming down. It looks like they, they know something is up. So Yaoi is just bringing the, the, the farm a little bit quicker. Now looking at the emblem set as well, I don't think anything is going to grab anyone's attention. Yeah, and again, the still lake place just to make sure that Rival can get a kill. And I think that's why Rival came, saw how much damage he can deal, and then he's like, yeah, it's oh. not enough. It's not enough. Yeah. 
so far here, things are getting a little bit more passive. Both teams are trying to set up as best as they can to get that next objective, which is that turtle, right? Both of these teams are quite dependent on that level four. They've hit that already, as we are already in the fifth minute of the game. Yep, Carl Tizi making a beeline. He knows, not wasting any time. Sanford goes for the Black Dragon form, no one home. Instead, Todak is going to inhabit uh, the lower part of the map. They're going to try and pressure Benny Cutie here. Spots! Yowie gets the kick! That's four members! Make that five! Toda! Get the pick off on the Playmaker! Wait, that's a lot of resources for Yowie! Was that a worth it? Whoa, 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 it's Sanji? We'll talk about it in a bit! You're looking for one! Sniper shot misses! The question! Yeah, back to that, right? Was it worth it to, you know, just expand all your resources onto Yowie there? Definitely, because Yowie is the one that can stop the play from happening with the Bloody Hunt, so I kind of feel like Drop down Yaoi first, and then if you guys want to go again, you guys can go again. And I kind of feel like this is one of those early strats where you try to drop the tank first, oh. just to make sure that he can do anything come late game. Flicker Bloody Hunt looking for the knockoff as well. Yooms is still here, in comes Rival as well. Yooms gets the kick, down one. Sanji does not survive. In comes Carl Gizzi, taking down Rival, but he's sandwiched by three. Can he get Moon? The answer is no. Retreating underneath the base, the turret, Sanford finds one, and now they're looking for more. Sanford very low. Not enough basic attacks from Chiku, guys. They disengage. You can tell that Yaoi is out for blood, right? He was taken down earlier by the play coming in from Yums, and he did the same thing. However, it does result in a 1 for 2 trade, and it actually alleviates Echo's pressure. Right now, looking at the situation, Echo still has a very good goal lead. Yaoi able to pull the buff away. Looking at the situation, Tora is really just waiting for opportunities. Once the opportunities present itself, then they'll go in. And looking at the way that they've been playing, they're really looking at Moon as well as Chiku. Do you guys have enough damage? And it looks like they don't have enough just yet, oh. especially you guys gets taken down. So she wrote, they're going to convert into this tier one up top. Down bottom, it looks like they're gonna go for the same play. It looks like Todak might try the same thing. Just throw everything at Yaoi. All right, but is that going to be fair trades happening, right? Is there a certain power spike that we need to be aware of for the side of Todak? Because as of this point, seven minutes in, they haven't been trading equally. Echo's been getting better trades. Long before that, probably secures it. Nope. Nothing to trade here. They're outgunned and outwitted. The turtle goes over to Echo. That's a clear advantage going over to the Orcas. Honestly, one thing that you could look out for is Chiku guys having three items first because Chiku guys is the most confident one. He has that three items, but there's another bite down and a pick off. You didn't know what hit him. You were saying? Nah, I'm just saying like, how can you really do anything when the moment you want to move, you get caught? Because at this point, Toda keeps getting caught. But here's the thing. Not 100% their fault, it's just that Echo oh, their position well. What? Yowie snags Momo! And another kill! Everyone was in there! I'm sorry, LaFell, but this is looking brutal, right? They know exactly what their composition entails. They go for the pickoffs right, left, and center. Oh, and even Sanford goes for a 1v1 kill and wins! Dude. I don't know. We've seen a lot of fannies drop to the EXP laners, the Badang, the Yuzong. And I gotta say, Yuzong, the damage can be quite deceiving because the damage is coming in from that passive. And for now, look at this, the way they're controlling the buff. If Rival couldn't get a lot done in the early stage of the game, now it's gonna be more difficult for him. Oh, there you go, Sanford. Uh, you mentioned this. They're choking out the purple away from Rival. Sanford popping the Black Dragon 4 preemptively. An easy take and mid for Echo. Oh, 7,000 gold lead already, but like we mentioned before, right? The, the beautiful thing about a fanny, it's not just its advantage in terms of that damage, that prowess, but also the fact that you can utilize it in a macro way, in an objective way. And so Rival, you can see he is trying to look for something on the board, which is basically the only thing you do, the turret push. Yeah, right now, looking at the itemization as well, Sanford just with that Hunter Strike. Oh, oh that, that could have been very costly, Rival. Anyways, looking at itemization from Chiku Guys, he has two. Looks like he's on the way to finish his uh, Wind of Nature. Once the Wind of Nature is done, I kind of feel like they're a little bit more um, open to getting into those fights. But again, even if Chiku Guys is open for the fight, you got to be careful of Sanji, man. Sanji could one-shot him, one him as well. Oh, oh, there's a hook coming in. Yums, close call. Echo did not say go. Lord very low, a tenth of its health left. Yorka score one. Like, even, 
e even if Rival wasn't that low, he's level 9. He was level 9. He just went to level 10, but he was level 9 against Carl Tizi, who is level 11. So is that really something that you can even contest at this point? Here's the thing. Even if they're 15 to 15, going up against a Lancelot, it's not going to be easy. The it's Lancelot, not even a, uh, it's the Lancelot. Yeah, because... Even just a uh, Lancelot, right? <laughs> the Lancelot is just so good. Okay, never mind. Conceal can play. I come? Why Conceal can I come? Conceal play. Rival just walked into that, and it's not even his fault. Go, go ahead, Lavelle. Now nah, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Echo Express. Echo Express, man. They didn't move the game so fast. Look, I'm just looking at the play, and I'm like, okay, the moment I, I say something, Yao is gonna catch someone. Or oh, there you go. <laughs> it could go. be Sanji. It could be Aoi. Bombs away. Scores one. A close call, but here comes Sanford. He wants to finish the job. Mid lane in jeopardy. They finally get it. Lord smashes that inhibitor. Oh, it's looking brutal. Okay, finally that hook does not land on the Totodak, but it does give Totodak maybe a little bit of breathing room. And at this point, right, Chiku guys, 2-2-0, two, two, level 11, just hit that power point. But does he have the items even to dish out the damage that he was meant to? I don't know, man. 10,000 gold lead. If it were me, I'd be uh -oh. having asthma attack. And now, rival, no energy. They're sandwiching him. Oh. Sanji gets a bead on him. Yaoi misses the hook. No energy. Spotted by Carl Tizi. Down by Sanji. Oh, he was cornered even before he knew it. 11,000 gold lead. Not looking too good because for them, now they got to make sure that they can survive and engage coming in from Echo for someone to eventually split push. But with, with Sanford and Sanji the way that they've been playing, I don't think they can serve right. <laughs> Here comes Sanford oh. coming in from the west. Breaking that holy shield, knocking up Momo, oh. knocking up Humes, and there's the plan of execution. They're not letting Rival? Todak breathe. Underneath the ocean, they take sand for the punish from Todak. Yeah, a one for two trade. So they are able to defend it. They don't lose that tower in the top side, but in exchange, they have to lose Yums and Momo. It could be worse. It could be Chiku, guys. But now, because the waves are hitting like this, Chiku, guys, does have some time and the resources to be able to maybe try and catch up. Okay, let's look at the instant replay, see what really happened here. And here's the thing, this is always how uh, Echo starts a fight. Yaoi, you try someone, you didn't get it. Sanji, no? All right, well, Sanford is going to come in and make sure something happens. And in this situation, you guys was able to dodge a lot of the damage, a lot of the attack. You guys still has that purify, so it's going to be good going up against the next team fight at the Lord if they want to go for it. But the thing is, someone has to be the one to take away uh, the Franco ult. Someone has to be the black sheep. Someone's just got to be like, yo, Yaoi, look at me. Hug me, bro. The scapegoat. Someone has to be the scapegoat. Sacrificial lamb. Here we go. A hook thrown out by Yaoi. Lord here. Not even a thought to contest. Another one for Echo. Wow, they're just dominating left, right, and center. Here, finally, Chiku guys picks up oh! that jump. Momo what? didn't know Yaoi was there. He gets knocked up and taken down just as quickly. And now Rival struggling to keep his purple. GTP coming in. Black Dragon 4 from Sanford. Another hook comes in from Yaoi. And they're going in underneath the turret. Chico guys falls. They do get one of Sanford. Again, the second death for this young XP laner. And now Lord Martin and Rival struggling to control and take down the minions. Yung is going to fall as well. Oh Lord, it's just two left. Now just one. Moon goes down. Echo takes game one. The Orca showing their teeth as they lead the series against Todak here in the first game. That was brutal. How many?